This is the Irish Wolf of America. Coming in live from the College of Mount St. Vincent's. In the Maryville building. Okay, so, what is my show going to, like, entail, basically? Well, I'm 100% Irish, so this means this show is going to be 100% crazy. I'm also 100% American, which means this show is going to be 100% awesome. Basically, I'm going to talk about, like, uh, for instance, I'm going to do quotes that Bush and Obama said at the memorial of 9-11. Um, also going to go into Lion King 3D and how this is the end of the world. Later on, if we have time, after we open the lines and everything, I might go into Rockwell and how the dorms have cameras everywhere. So, also, the radio show is not the only only thing media offers here. Um, the, we also have TV shows and films. I also want to do a TV show. Um, they have the Jackie O show on at 6 o'clock, so if you have time, try and catch that too. But what is the TV show? Why haven't I started it yet? You need five people to work the cameras, so I have not produced that staff yet. Anyone who wants to do this, try and contact me. We can, like, rotate shifts, so if you want to be on the scenes, you can just go ahead and do that. Um, so, again, I need a TV show and a radio show. It's at this time I'd like to give a special shout out to maybe anyone from Salesian or a former Salesian student who was listening. That was my old high school. Uh, somebody was asking me what college is like, and I believe this song sums it up best. Well, that song sums it up best. Um, you, you want to know what the song was? I'm not telling you. Nobody told me. I had to find it out all on my own. So I'm going to go into like what Bush said on the memorial of 9-11. He, he picked out this article from Lincoln. Lincoln wrote this article to this like lady who lost five sons due to war, and he felt sympathetic to her, so he wrote her this letter. Um, Bush found this letter. He, he couldn't really... Think of anything better to do than, than to say this at the 10-year anniversary of 9-11, and, and it's clearly seen why. Uh, go ahead and play the clip. President Lincoln not only understood the heartbreak of his country, he also understood the cost of sacrifice and reached out to console those in sorrow. In the fall of 1864, he learned that a widow had lost five sons in the Civil War. And he wrote her this letter. Dear Madam, I have been shown in the files of the War Department a statement of the Adjutant General of Massachusetts that you're the mother of five sons who have died gloriously on the field of battle. I feel how weak and fruitless must be any words of mine which should attempt to beguile you from the grief of a loss so overwhelming but I cannot refrain from tendering to you the consolation that may be found in the thanks of the Republic they died to save. I pray that our Heavenly Father may assuage the anguish of your bereavement and leave you only the cherished memory of the loved and lost and the solemn pride that must be yours to have laid so costly a sacrifice upon the altar of freedom. Yours very sincerely and respectfully, Abraham Lincoln. There you go. Bush quoted Abraham Lincoln. This is a very historic letter, and you see why. It talks about the American dream, how we must fight for freedom, even if it means the cost of our very lives. You see, it's the American dream, the bold eagle, flying over the seas to ensure peace worldwide, not just for us alone. Um, now I will talk about what Obama has said at the 10-year anniversary of 9-11. He actually read from Psalm 46. It's a quote from the Bible, New King's Version, I believe. It's talking about, she, see, shall, shall crumble the mountains, basically Armageddon stuff. Uh, but throughout it all, God is, is with us. And through 9-11 and now, God has been with us. So go ahead, play the clip. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. 
Therefore, we will not fear. Even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, there is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord was made desolations in the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Really, what, what could be a better quote for Obama to have picked? I mean, it's talking about the end of the world. God is what is throughout whatever tragedy we may entail. Through 9-11, through the economic plummet that has been going on for the past, the past decade, really. Um, it's been going around worldwide, and God has been with us throughout it all, and he will continue to be with us throughout these troubling times. Um, Right now, I'm going to start opening the lines. If anyone wants to call in, talk about what Bush said or what Obama said, you feel free to. The number is, oh shoot, what's the number? Hold on, I got it, I got it. 718-405-something-something. Oh, Andrew's over here, so look at me. It's, it's 718-405-3456. Feel free to call in. Lines are now open. Oh, not her open. <laughs> Just close them. So once again, it was like Bush and Obama. If, if you want to call in, feel free to. Don't blame me if you don't. Might be a little bit shy. Oh, yeah. It is a rainy day out there. I don't know who, who would not be in their house, sitting down, listening to the radio. Make a, make a free phone call. As long as it doesn't affect your minutes, right? Yeah. Or not. <laughs> For my bad jokes. So on 8405-3456. We'd love to get your calls on President Obama's statement at the 9-11 memorial. We'd like to get President W. Bush's statement. Me and Paul are here. We are not going anywhere last time I heard. Not going anywhere. We're sitting right here. I will not leave. I hope you didn't have classes or something. That's true. Well, I'm, why don't they call during class then? Everyone else does. <laughs> Sit there, everything's nice. What can go wrong? And the phone rings. You know, we gotta, like, open up a text message service. Like, they could text us their messages and then just call them. That's not a good idea. How about that, everybody? Do you want text messages? It would increase, uh... Increase the use of not. Using your voice. Using words instead. Did you ever hear those uh, type of diseases? If you look at a screen too long, you get this. If you type too much, you get that. Every minute there's a disease. I don't know if it's for money. I don't know if it's for news ratings or they're actually trying to help us, trying to make us safe. I, I don't know. For, for, uh, for example, the Dr. Oz, he's one Dr. of the... Dr. Uh, he uh, made a statement the other day about there's certain chemical in apple juice that could poison us. And now the whole apple juice industry is uh, is now, you know, in question and supermarkets are losing money and Dr. Oz is being thrown around the place. You know, apples what actually cause about? ulcers. They have acid in them. Yeah, I think that's what Dr. Oz was saying. That, that, yeah, that type of ingredient could cause danger to young children because young children are the ones that consume apple juice the most than other age groups. I guess Dr. Ross feels from what him and his group 
stated that they found this and this is this is a, a cautious problem and they want to try to fix it. Well, the doctor said that his information, his research is inaccurate and it doesn't work out. In that, uh, in that conclusion, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I'm definitely not a TV doctor. What I do know is I drink apple juice. I eat apple juice. Oh, sorry. I like I eat, grape juice. I eat apple better. sauce. Grape juice is better than apple juice. What kind of brand of grape juice? I know there's so many different brands, like 100% juice. Juicy juice beats Juicy 100%. juice, right? Yeah, like that, I think that's it, right? Juicy juice, 100% juice, 100% kids. Okay, I think we should like move along, leave the lines open. So we're gonna move along. Yeah. No one's a call in fine. You win. I'll play kickball tomorrow. Keep going. What's yeah. next on the agenda? Next on the agenda. Lion King 3D. Has anyone seen this the, the, the trailer? This is the end of the world as we know it. Some people say it's just like trying to remake it for a new generation, but you have to come to some point and realize Lion King 3D. Now there's going to be Aladdin 3D. They're going to remake all the Star Wars movies 3D. When will it stop? It's like they're taking our generation's culture and rebranding it for this new generation and trying to like erase us. Like, have anyone seen the new cartoons lately? They, they are nothing like ours. And all this, these generations keep saying, oh, our cartoons were just bad. The quality, the quality sucked. But the cartoons had real, real storylines that kept you interested. I mean, th this, is, this is really bad. And what about the subliminal messaging? Subliminal messaging, yes. How is this going to work? Are you going to see the words fly at you this time? You all know what I'm talking about. I'm not sure we should say that word online, so, in the air. What do you think, Andrew? Should we say it? Oh, why not? I mean, uh, right. Okay, okay, in Lion King, throughout the movie, there were subliminal messages that said the S word, sex, throughout the entire movie. It wasn't just when he was lying down through the stars. It was written throughout the entire thing. When you look at that scene, though, when you see, I believe it was Simba, am I correct? When he fell yeah, Simba. and they were looking at the stars... As a movie creator, why would you put that little part in there anyway? Would you do it to transition to the other scene, or were you actually trying to show a message? When it comes to subliminal messaging, it's very fast, it's very concrete, it's very planned out. And you will not notice it. With this, it was very slow, everything came together very, uh, very casually. And I, I felt in that certain scene, the Lion King did that on purpose. And now, we see it in 3D, you can actually touch the word. Imagine that, touching the subliminal messaging. And like what you said, will this actually work? Well now, instead of looking at it and your brain detecting it, you not noticing, well, the back of your brain, that, that's how the brain works, and we saw that it doesn't work, will 3D work? Well, because I know one thing that's been going on, they've been releasing these new DVDs, they've been erasing all this... Really? Yeah. yeah, they've been erasing all the preferred stuff out of all Disney movies, like Fantasia... Um, Lion King, for instance, I'm pretty sure he did that. And Bambi, the, the Bambi, Bambi, the DVD. I believe that her mom doesn't die in the new version. Wow. I guess they, I guess they want to be safe than sorry. I guess they want to save the controversy, save the over uh, protected parents from criticizing these movies, and they want to make as much money as possible. So now they get money from the people who don't really care what they show, and then that group of people who do care what they show. Now Disney can make more money right before it goes back to the Disney vault for a long time. 